Welcome to the week ahead for the week ending Friday the 31st of July. Now this week was a key week for the markets in terms of understanding the impact of the coronavirus pandemic, not just on economies but also on companies. US GDP, we saw contracted 9.5% quarter on quarter. In Germany, the contraction was 10.1% and the Eurozone saw its economy contract 12.1% in the second quarter compared to the previous quarter. These are pretty ugly numbers. Now, we also heard from the Federal Reserve that who didn't change monetary policy as expected, but they said that they are standing prepared to use all the tools if it's needed. They also highlighted concerns about that the, the growth, um, the recovery in the US economy could actually be slowing. And that was also supported by initial jobless claims and also consumer confidence in the US, which are showing signs of stalling. Um, and as far as the market's concerned, the FTSE is looking to end the week around 1.6% lower. DAX is heading for a loss of 2.8%. Dow, we're looking at loss in the region of 0.6%. The S&P is actually um, looking to just move up slightly higher for the week. And the NASDAQ, the star performer of the indices, is actually uh, looking to end the week 2.1% higher. We'll come back to that one shortly. Looking at gold, again, another star performer here. Gold has rallied 4% across the week. It's looking at gains of around 10 10% across the month. Now, the main reason for the gains this week for the gold is the weakness in the US dollar. Uh, the, the US dollar index has dropped to a two-year low. Um, the dollar index is also on for its worst monthly performance in a decade. So when the dollar's cheaper, when the dollar's weaker, it makes gold cheaper um, for buyers with foreign currencies. Also, gold is being lifted by safe haven flows. You've also got the sort of US-China um, tension still going on and concerns about um, economies recovering, such as the US. So gold is really getting those safe haven flows as well. As I said, the US dollar has had an absolute shocker of a week and a month. And that supported um, the euro, which is trading at highest levels since June 2019. And also you've got the pound trading at uh, four and a half month highs. As far as uh, companies are concerned, it's also been a really big week for companies reporting, both here in the UK and across the Atlantic in the States. Over here, the big focus has been on the banks. Now we've had Lloyds, Barclays and NatWest, formerly RBS, have, also, uh, have all reported larger bad loan provisions than was expected. Now this basically, this is the money that they put aside for loans that they think will default or won't be fully repaid. Um, so we've got, this is sort of giving us a clue as to the outlook. We're expecting there to be sort of with, with increasing numbers of unemployment and also businesses collapsing that these bad loans are, are going to be much bigger than, than what we forecast. Lloyds, if we had a look, they've dropped over 11.5% across this week. Now they are a bellwether, so that sort of does give us a clue about how uh, the UK economy is performing. Another one to watch out for was Next. Next reported better than expected results. They only reported a 28% fall in full price sales. Uh, and this was down, partly down to their online offering, which has really held them well through the, uh, the coronavirus crisis. They're up at said, around 7.5% across this week. Other one to watch for were the fangs. Okay, Netflix have reported earlier, but we had Facebook, Amazon, Apple, and Google parent Alphabet all reporting last night, and they reported fantastic results. We've seen a sort of a, uh, they crushed uh, estimates on either revenue or on earnings. Um, and now these stocks were, they had hit their all time highs earlier this month, but they had just eased off, um, come away from those highs heading towards earnings as investors were starting to show signs of nerves that they wouldn't be able to, to, to be able to provide numbers to, to back up these lofty valuations. But actually they have, so we can expect to see these stocks really pick up um, on the, uh, as, as the as the market opens today, and also take the Nasdaq higher. I mean, as I said, these these results, what they've really shown us is that these big tech stocks have not only weathered the coronavirus crisis, but they're positively thriving in the crisis. 
Thanks very much for joining me and have a great weekend.